Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of Welcome to 15 Minutes in the Bible with Arrington Bible Baptist Church. Today's reading is in Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 1, through chapter 41, and verse 18. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Psalm chapter 90, verse 1 through chapter 91, and verse 16. In Proverbs chapter 26, verses 1 and 2. Jeremiah chapter 39. In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army against Jerusalem, and they besieged it. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, the city was broken up. And all the princes of the king of Babylon came in and sat in the middle gate, even Nergal Shazer, Samgar Nebo, Sarsekum, Rabsares, Nergal Shazer, Rabmag, with all the residue of the princes of the king of Babylon. And it came to pass that when Zedekiah the king of Judah saw them, and all the men of war, then they fled and went forth out of the city by night, by the way of the king's garden, by the gate betwixt the two walls, and he went out the way of the plain. But the Chaldeans' army pursued after them, and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. When they had taken him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Riblah, in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. Then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah in Riblah before his eyes. Also the king of Babylon slew all the nobles of Judah. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with chains to carry him to Babylon. And the Chaldeans burned the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and break down the walls of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive into Babylon the remnant of the people that remained in the city, and those that fell away, that fell to him, and the rest of the people that remained. But Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, left of the poor of the people, which had nothing, in the land of Judah, and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him, and look well to him, and do him no harm, but do unto him even as he shall say unto thee. So Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, sent, and Nebuchadnezzar, Nabsaris, and Nur, Glashazer, Ragmag, and all the king of Babylon's princes. Even they sent and took Jeremiah out of the court of the prison, and committed unto him Jedaliah, the son of Heacom, the son of Shaphan, that he should carry him home. So he dwelt among the people. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Go and speak to Abdimelech, the Ethiopian, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I'll bring my words upon this city for evil, and not for good, and they shall be accomplished in that day before thee. But I will deliver thee in that day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men of whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prey unto thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord. Chapter 40 The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after that Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Ramah, when he had taken him from being bound in chains among all that were carried away captive of Jerusalem in Judah, which were carried away captive unto Babylon. And the captain of the guard took Jeremiah, and said unto him, The Lord thy God hath pronounced his evil upon this place. Now the Lord hath brought it, and done according as he has said, because ye have sinned against the Lord, and have not obeyed his voice. Therefore this thing, is come upon you. And now, behold, I loose thee this day from the chains which were upon thine hand. If it seem good unto thee to come with me into Babylon, come, and I will look well unto thee. But if it seem ill unto thee to come with me into Babylon, forbear. Behold, all the land is before thee. Whither it seemeth good and convenient for thee to go, thither go. Now while he was not yet gone back, he said, Go back also to Jedaliah, the son of Heacom, the son of Shaphan, whom the king of Babylon hath made governor over the cities of Judah, and dwell with him among the people, 
or go wheresoever it seemed convenient unto thee to go. So the captain of the guard gave him victuals and a reward, and let him go. Then went Jeremiah unto Jedaliah, the son of Heacham, to Mizpah, and dwelt with him among the people that were left in the land. Now when all the captains of the forces which were in the fields, even they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Jedaliah, the son of Ahiakim, governor in the land, and had committed unto him men and women and children, and of the poor of the land, of them that were not carried away captive to Babylon. Then they came to Jedaliah to Mizpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and Johanan, and Jonathan, the sons of Kariah, and Sariah, the son of Tenahumeth, and the sons of Ephai, the Nido Phaethite, and Jezaniah, the son of Maacathite, they and their men. And Jedaliah, the son of Heacham, the son of Shaphan, swear unto them and to their men, saying, Fear not to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. As for me, behold, I will dwell at Mizpah to serve the Chaldeans, which will come unto us. But ye, gather ye wine and summer fruits and oil, and put them in your vessels, and dwell in your cities that ye have taken. Likewise, when all the Jews that were in Moab, and among the Ammonites, and in Edom, and that were in all the countries, heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant of Judah, and that he had set over them Jedaliah the son of Heacham, the son of Shaphan. Even all the Jews returned out of all places whither they were driven, and came to the land of Judah, to Jedaliah, unto Mizpah, and gathered wine and summer fruits very much. Moreover, Johanan the son of Kariah, and all the captains of the forces that were in the fields came to Jedaliah to Mizpah, and said unto him, Dost thou certainly know that Baalus, the king of the Ammonites, has sent Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, to slay thee? But Jedaliah, the son of Heacham, believed them not. Then Johanan, the son of Kariah, spake to Jedaliah in Mizpah secretly, saying, Let me go, I pray thee, and I will slay Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and no man shall know it. Wherefore should he slay thee, that all the Jews which are gathered unto thee should be scattered, and the remnant in Judah perish? But Jedaliah the son of Heacham said unto Johanan the son of Kareah, Thou shalt not do this thing, for thou speakest falsely of Ishmael. Chapter 41 Now it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael the son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishema, of the seed royal, and the princes of the king, even ten men with him, came unto Jedaliah, the son of Heacham, to Mizpah, and there they did eat bread together in Mizpah. Then arose Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and the ten men that were with him, and smote Jedaliah, the son of Heacham, the son of Shaphan, with the sword, and slew him, whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. Ishmael also slew all the Jews that were with him, even with Jedaliah at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans that were found there, and the men of war. And it came to pass the second day after he had slain Jedaliah, that no man knew it, that there came certain from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even fourscore men, having their beard shaved and their clothes rent, and having cut themselves with offerings and incense in their hand, to bring them to the house of the Lord. And Ishmael the son of Nathaniah went forth from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And it came to pass as he met them, he said unto them, Come to Jedaliah, the son of Heacham. And it was so, when they came into the midst of the city, that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, slew them, and cast them into the midst of the pit, he and the men that were with him. But ten men were found among them that said unto Ishmael, Slay us not, for we have treasures in the field of wheat, and of barley, and of oil, and of honey. So he forbear, and slew them not among their brethren. Now the pit wherein Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men, whom he had slain because of Jedaliah, was it which Asa the king had made for fear of Baasha, king of Israel, and Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, filled it with them that were slain. Then Ishmael carried away captive all the residue of the people that were in Mizpah, even the king's daughters, and all the people that remained in Mizpah, whom Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Jedaliah, the son of Ahiakim. And Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, carried them away captive, and departed to go over to the Ammonites. But when Johanan, the son of Kareah, and all the captains of the forces that were with him, heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, had done, then they took all the men and went to fight with Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, 
and found him by the great waters that are in Gibeon. Now it came to pass that when all the people which were with Ishmael saw Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces that were with him, then they were glad. So all the people that Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah cast about and returned, and went unto Johanan, the son of Korea. But Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, escaped from Johanan with eight men, and went to the Ammonites. Then took Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces that were with him, all the remnant of the people, whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, from Mizpah, after he had slain Gedaliah, the son of Ahiakim, even mighty men of war, and the women and the children and the eunuchs, whom he had brought again from Gibeon. And they departed and dwelt in the habitation of Kimham, which is by Bethlehem, to go to enter into Egypt, because of the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them, because Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, had slain Jedaliah, the son of Ahiakim, whom the king of Babylon had made governor in the land. Second Timothy chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God, who has saved us, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me, and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently, and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day, and in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Psalm chapter 90 Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth in the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye, children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as sleep. In the morning they are like grass, which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth, and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down, and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and that by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. 
Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. Chapter 91 He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I'll set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Proverbs chapter 26 As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. As a bird by wandering, as a swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Thank you for joining us for 15 minutes in the Bible. my heart oh take and seal it seal it for thy courts above